Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, welcome to the class. So today we are going to discuss about the analysis of the electrocyclic reactions with the help of orbital symmetry correlation method, right? So orbital symmetry correlation method for the analysis of electrocyclic reactions. Okay. So in the previous class, what we have done is, we have done the analysis of the electrocyclic reactions. Okay. But not with the orbital symmetry correlation method, but with the other uh, type of uh, analysis method that is the frontier molecular orbital approach. So the frontier molecular orbital theory mainly works in identifying the homo molecular orbital only in the case of the electrocyclic reactions or the homo as well as the lumo molecular orbital in the case of cycloaddition reactions or the sigmatropic reactions and other reactions which we will be discussing in the future classes. Okay. But what the frontier molecular orbital theory has concluded is the frontier molecular orbital theory after identifying the homo molecular orbital under a particular reaction condition like say the thermal condition. So in the thermal condition there will be a different homo molecular orbital and under photochemical condition entirely different homo molecular orbital will be seen. So that is for sure because thermal reactions are always proceeding in the ground state whereas the photochemical reactions will happen in the first excited state. So therefore the homo molecular orbitals obviously change in the each case. Okay. So, after identifying the homo molecular orbital, what we are doing in the electrocyclic reactions means you are supposed to rotate the terminal uh, carbon orbitals. So, either in the same direction at the both termini which is also called as con-rotatory mode of uh, reaction or if you rotate the uh, terminal orbitals in the different directions, opposite directions, one in the clockwise direction, other in the anti-clockwise direction. So then it is called as a disrotatory mode of reaction. Okay. So the same uh, modes of reaction that is the con-rotatory mode as well as the disrotatory mode will have to be performed whether you are analyzing with the homo lumo theory that is the frontier molecular orbital theory or with the orbital symmetry correlation method. So that is for sure. Now, Coming to the orbital symmetry correlation method, before trying to understand the analysis method procedure with the help of orbital symmetry correlation method, you need to identify the specific symmetry element, specific symmetry element corresponding to the molecular orbital which is involved in the formation of the uh, product by rotations either con rotatory mode or dis rotatory mode. That means you usually see the con rotatory mode or dis rotatory mode. For a particular uh, molecule, you have to select one symmetry element, specific symmetry element with respect to con rotatory mode process and another specific symmetry element with respect to the dis rotatory mode process. That has to be done first. So after identifying the specific symmetry element corresponding to the con rotatory mode and also the specific symmetry element corresponding to the dis rotatory mode, what we need to do is we need to classify the molecular orbitals based upon the symmetry element like whether they are symmetric with respect to that symmetric element or anti-symmetric with respect to that symmetry element. So the first step in towards the analysis of the electrocyclic reactions using the orbital symmetry correlation method is you need to identify a specific symmetry element for the con rotatory process and you know you also need to identify the specific symmetry element so for the dis rotatory process. So the second thing is 
So, the symmetry element which is identified for the conrotatory process should be retained throughout the uh, end of the reaction, throughout the reaction. That means the same symmetry element should be seen in the case of reactant molecule. The same symmetry element should also be seen in the case of the transition state which is in between the reactant and product and also the same symmetry element should also be seen in the case of the product. Okay. So, if you are able to see the same symmetry element for a conrotatory process from the reactant to the transition state and then finally to the product, you have to select that, identify that symmetry element for the conrotatory process. Similarly, for the disrotatory process also, if you have identified the symmetry element, that symmetry element should be seen in the case of the reactant, also should be seen in the case of the transition state, should also be seen in the case of the product. Okay, That is the first step. After identifying the uh, symmetry element, what we are doing? So, the symmetry element should be applied to the molecular orbitals and see whether those molecular orbitals are symmetric with respect to that symmetry element or anti-symmetric with respect to that symmetry element has to be also analyzed in the second step. So, the third step is after successfully identifying the symmetry element and then uh, checking the molecular orbitals whether symmetric or anti-symmetric with respect to that symmetry element. Now, you have to correlate those molecular orbitals with the same symmetry between the reactant and the product. So, the reactant is having some molecular orbitals and the product is also going to have the molecular orbitals. So, you have to correlate the molecular orbitals of the reactant with the product or vice versa or the molecular orbitals of the product with the reactant with respect to that symmetry element. So, if you find that those two are correlating with each other, then based upon the information after drawing the correlation diagram, you can conclude that the reaction is going to happen in the ground state or whether the reaction is going to happen in the excited state. Okay. So, if the reaction is going to happen in the ground state with respect to the correlation of the molecular orbitals between the reactant and the product, so you can say that this reaction, particular reaction with a particular symmetry element which is uh, you know uh, for the conrotatory process or for the disrotatory process is happening under the ground state that means under thermal conditions. So, similarly you can also uh, after uh, drawing the correlation diagram, so you can also identify that if the reaction is happening in the excited state means it is happening in the photochemical conditions. So, this is how beautifully you can analyze the symmetry, uh, the uh, orbital symmetry correlation method process for the feasibility of an electrocyclic reaction, right? Yeah. Now, we will see how to identify the symmetry element, how to identify the symmetry element. For example, in the case of butadiene, which is transforming into cyclobutene. So, this is a cyclobutene molecule. Okay. So, for conrotatory process there is a specific homo and for disrotatory process also there is a specific homo molecular orbital. Let us see with this molecular orbital. So now, if this is the molecular orbital for which you are going to identify the symmetry element which is going to be constant uh, or continued uh, till the completion of the experiment or reaction. So now see, the reaction is possible, the reaction is possible if you perform con rotations on this molecular orbital, am I right? So if you perform the con rotations on the terminal carbon atoms lobe like this. Now, this blue color which is assumed like positive wave function is after rotation of 90 degrees is coming in this direction and with this rotation 
this blue color which is assumed to be the positive wave function is also coming to have an end on end overlap with these two orbitals. So, as a result of which you will be seeing the sigma bond right. So, that means you are going to perform con mode of rotation ok. So, what happens in the cyclic transition state? I am just mentioning the terminal carbon atom lobes only. So, this is the cyclic transition state where slowly the bond formation is happening and from the cyclic transition state, so you will be going to see the formation of a bond because of the So, this is the process where you have identified a molecular orbital upon con rotations you are going to get the bonding interactions as a result of which you will be seeing the product right. So, now see what kind of symmetry is present here in this molecular orbital. So, if I say that it might have a sigma plane of symmetry that is the mirror plane of symmetry you should say whether you are going to agree with me or differ with me. So, is it going to have a sigma plane of symmetry? If I cut this half or erase this half, will you be able to see the exactly replica with a mirror? No, right? Exactly, correct, right? So, this is not going to have a mirror image. So, what it is going to have is a C2 axis of symmetry. It is going to have a C2 axis. That means, this is the axis and then if you rotate it by 180 degrees what is going to happen? The lobe with the positive wave function here after rotation by 180 degrees is going to appear here after which you are getting the identical right. So, that means it is having a C2 axis of symmetry C2 axis of symmetry. Now, check whether this transition state is also having the same symmetry or not. As per rule, it has to retain the symmetry element until the completion of the reaction. So, now upon 360 degrees of uh, sorry 180 degrees of rotation, what is happening? This negative wave function lobe is going to come here and this positive wave function lobe is going to come here, right. So, of course, it is also maintaining C2 axis of symmetry. And now in the product, so if you see this and then rotate it by 180 degrees, again you will be getting the identical. It may be little confusing because this is a 2D uh, image and now as usual I got the molecular orbital model with which you can clearly understand the scenario. So, now this is the molecular orbital uh, model for this particular molecular orbital. Of course, I am showing you the only terminal carbon atoms with the lobes, orbital lobes. So, this blue color is the positive wave function, let us assume it and this pink color is the negative wave function. So, what is seen here is the positive wave function on the top and the first carbon atom and the negative wave function on the bottom and then on the fourth carbon atom. So, negative wave function on the top and then positive wave function on the bottom, right. So, now it is having C2 axis of symmetry not the mirror plane because if I cover this half you cannot imagine the other half. So, these two are different. So, C2 axis of uh, symmetry means you have to rotate this by 180 degrees upon 360 degrees rotation how many times you are going to see the identical uh, is thing is nothing but the C right. So, two times you are going to see that identical positions. So, therefore, it is having C2 axis of symmetry. Now, if I rotate it by 180 degrees. So, I have rotated it by 180 degrees what has happened? So, again you are getting the identical. If I rotate it by one more 180 degrees, again you will see the same identical. So, therefore, this molecular orbital is having C2 axis of symmetry. When the transition state, what is happening? You are doing the con rotations, you are doing con rotations, right. 
So, con rotation means both being say, in the clockwise direction or both in the anti clockwise direction. Let us say we move both the terminal carbon atoms, rotate terminal carbon atoms at the orbitals in the clockwise direction. So, I am slowly turning it in the clockwise direction and this one also slowly turning it in the clockwise direction. Okay. So, this is the transition state where the bond is slowly forming the uh, new bond and the existing bonds are slowly breaking. So, now you see this, this is also the exactly having C2 axis of symmetry, right. So, if I rotate it by 180 degrees, what is going to happen? Of course, exactly you are getting the identical. So, this is maintaining the C2 axis of symmetry that is the element of symmetry even in the transition state. And now, come to the product stage where the complete rotation by 90 degrees at the termini has been taken place and then the now orbitals are involved in the end on end overlapping resulting in the formation of a sigma bond. So, this is the product. Okay. So, now see the product also. So, it is not going to have the mirror plane of symmetry, but definitely it is continuing the C2 axis of symmetry from the beginning. Right? So, if this is the product upon rotation by 180 degrees, exactly you are going to see the identical. So, for a con rotatory process, for a con rotatory process, so what is the element of symmetry fixed? That is C2 axis of symmetry right so you can write like for con rotatory process c2 axis of symmetry element is present throughout the reaction so now check for the disrotatory process so disrotatory process has to happen and as a result of which the reaction should proceed further so for which you need to identify the molecular orbital properly So, this is the molecular orbital. So, now you are performing the disc mode of rotation in order to get the product. So, disc mode means one being rotated by clockwise direction and the other being other termini being rotated by anti clockwise direction. So, this is rotated by clockwise 90 degrees and this is also rotated by anti clockwise 90 degrees. Okay. So, now check it. So, if I put a mirror here exactly at the center, so what you will be getting means the exact replica of this half. So, it is having a mirror plane of symmetry, but if I try to hold this in the axis and then rotate it by 180 degrees, what is going to happen? This negative lobe which is assumed like negative lobe, this color is going to come here, which means that it is not being identical. So, C2 axis is not present. Okay. So, this is having a sigma plane of symmetry which is also called as mirror plane of symmetry. Now, what rotations you are performing here is this rotations, this mode of rotations and the orbital is having sigma plane and in the transition state, what is going to happen? In the transition state, because this is rotated by clockwise direction, the positive wave function is coming here and then this is rotated by 90 degrees in the anti-clockwise direction. So, again the positive lobe is coming this side. So, in the transition state also, what you are able to see is a mirror plane of symmetry that is sigma plane is present in the transition state also. So, this is 
reactant so in the product if you see So, this is the product again you can see the sigma plane mirror image ok. So, this is the product. So, therefore, it concludes like for a disrotatory mode of reaction process the sigma plane of symmetry is being observed in the reactant also in the transition state and also in the product right. So, for a disrotatory mode the symmetry element is sigma plane or mirror plane of symmetry. So, first step we have completed. First step is what? To go for a correlation uh, diagram. So, you need to identify a particular symmetry element for the controtatory process as well as a particular symmetry element for the disrotatory process. So, now we have identified that for a controtatory process C2 axis of symmetry is the symmetry element and for a disrotatory process sigma plane of symmetry is the symmetry element ok. So, coming to the next step. So, next step is you have to check the molecular orbitals whether they are symmetric or anti-symmetric with respect to the symmetry element particular symmetry element ok. So, for that we need to go for the examples. For example, if you are checking the a feasibility of the conversion of a butadiene to cyclobutene or the reversal which is also called as electrocyclic reversion process the cyclobutene to the butadiene first you need to do is you need to construct the molecular orbitals both for the reactant that is the butadiene and also you need to construct the molecular orbitals for the buta cyclobutene cyclobutene. So, in the previous class we have constructed the molecular orbitals, pi molecular orbitals for the reactant molecule butadiene. So, So, these are the four pi molecular orbitals of the butadiene and this is the energy of those pi molecular orbitals. So, this is psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4. Let us see in the controtatory process because the symmetry element is C2 axis of symmetry the reaction is going to be feasible under ground state or under the excited state ok. So, let us check that for that you need to properly write the molecular orbitals. So, psi 1 has 0 nodes. So, therefore, it will look like this. So, psi 2 has one node therefore, it looks like this. Psi 3 has two nodes and uh, therefore, it looks like this. Psi 4 has three nodes. So, it appears like this. Okay. 
right. So, it has 0 nodes, it has 1 node here, it has 2 nodes, one is here and the other is here and it has 3 nodes 1, 2 and 3. So, as this is the conversion of butadiene to cyclobutene in con mode, you should be checking for the C2 axis of symmetry only. So, now see whether this molecular orbital is going to have C2 axis of symmetry or not. If it is having C2 axis of symmetry, you just write yes, because it is symmetric with respect to the C2 axis of symmetry element. If it is not having the C2 axis of symmetry, you just write A, because it is anti-symmetric with respect to the element C2 axis of symmetry. Okay. So, now you check it. So, this is the psi 1 molecular orbital upon rotation by 180 degrees, 180 degrees. So, it is not going to give the identical. So, this molecular orbital is anti-symmetric with respect to C2 axis of symmetry. And now, this is symmetric with respect to the C2 axis of symmetry. Right. By 180 degrees of rotation, this positive lobe will come here and this will go there, you will be getting an identical. So, this one will be anti-symmetric with respect to the C2 axis of symmetry and this will be symmetric with respect to the C2 axis of symmetry. Now, these are the molecular orbitals, pi molecular orbitals for the butadiene. So, you need to see the molecular orbitals for cyclobutene as well. So, what is going to happen here? It has a sigma bond sigma is there and it has a pi molecular orbital because pi bond is there and then it has a pi star molecular orbital because pi bond is there and again it has sigma star because it is having the sigma bond. So, this is pi star and this is sigma star. So, sigma bond is happening because there is an overlap end on end overlap like this and pi bond the pi molecular orbital bonding molecular orbital you can see like this and then anti bonding molecular orbital will look like this and this is again the anti bonding molecular orbital for the sigma bond. So, now check the symmetry element C2 axis of symmetry. So, is this going to have the C2 axis of symmetry? After bond formation, sigma bond formation, if you rotate it by 180 degrees, what is going to happen? This negative lobe and this negative lobe will be exchanged. So, identical. So, therefore, it is symmetric with respect to the C2 axis of symmetry. And now, here, if you see, this is having a mirror plane, but not the C2 axis of symmetry, right. So, it is anti-symmetric with respect to the C2 axis of symmetry. And again this one, so this is symmetric, right. So, if you rotate it, this positive lobe will be replacing here and you will get the identical. So, this is symmetric with respect to C2 axis of symmetry and this one, if you rotate, this positive lobe is replacing this negative lobe, that means it is anti-symmetric with respect to C2 axis of symmetry. So, second step is also done. So, you have given the symmetry element to the molecular orbitals of both reactants as well as the product. Now, the third step is you need to correlate these molecular orbitals, correlate this symmetry of the molecular orbitals. So, correlation should be done here. The most important uh, point to be noted is the symmetry should be matched for these molecular orbitals such that their energy difference is very minimal. 
their energy difference is very minimal. So you cannot say that this is anti-symmetric and this is also anti-symmetric. So why don't we match this with this one? No, it is against the crossover rule. Okay, so you can match this symmetry element of this molecular orbital with the symmetry element of product molecular orbital which is almost close in energy difference. So the energy difference should be less. So as a result of which you can match this with this one and this is matching with this one. And now, so this anti-symmetric is matching with this one and this is matching with this one. So what is happening here means this is the energy barrier. You have an energy barrier between the bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So these are all the bonding molecular orbitals and these are all the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. Now let me say that in this case for the conversion of butadiene to cyclobutene on con mode of rotations on con mode of rotations where the symmetry element is C2 axis what we can see finally from this correlation diagram means th the matching is done such between the molecular orbitals of the reactant and the product such that there is no crossover right is there any crossover no so there is no crossover it is not crossing the energy barrier so when there is no crossover which indicates that the reaction is happening in the ground state the reaction is happening in the ground state right so if it is in the ground state that means it is happening in the thermal conditions if you go back to the previous class and recollect the woodward uh, hoffman rules it says that for a foreign electron system under thermal conditions con rotatory mode is allowed right so exactly the same is seen in the case of orbital correlation method also. For a foreign electron system on con rotations, you are able to see the bonding interactions in the ground state only, matching in the ground state only, that means under thermal conditions. Right. So, similarly, we can also go for the disrotatory process and see whether the disrotatory process for this conversion, that is the butadiene into cyclobutene, is also happening in the ground state are happening in the first excited state can be seen. So for which you need to change the symmetry element, right. So the symmetry element for the disrotatory process is sigma plane. So remaining things are all as it is same so the symmetry element you need to concentrate when there is a disrotatory process happening in the conversion of butadiene to cyclobutene is sigma plane of symmetry which is also called as mirror plane of symmetry now you see the mirror plane of symmetry for this orbitals psi 1 is having a mirror plane so therefore it is symmetric with respect to mirror plane of symmetry right so psi 2 is not having a mirror plane so therefore it is anti symmetric with respect to the mirror plane of symmetry and now psi 3 is again having the mirror plane so it is symmetric with respect to mirror plane of symmetry and psi 4 is not having the mirror plane so it is anti symmetric right so now come to the product side. So now check whether this is going to have a mirror plane of symmetry or not. This sigma molecular orbital, is it having the mirror plane of symmetry? Of course, yes, it is having mirror plane of symmetry. Now come with this one, is this having mirror plane of symmetry or not? Yes, this is also having mirror plane of symmetry come to the pi star molecular orbital and you cannot see the mirror plane of symmetry here. So it is anti-symmetric with respect to 
mirror plane of symmetry. And coming to the sigma star molecular orbital also, it is not having the mirror plane. You cannot get the mirror image. So, it is also anti-symmetric with respect to mirror plane of symmetry. So, first thing is done. We have identified the symmetry element for this rotatory process. Therefore, we have also identified the molecular orbitals with particular symmetry element whether it is symmetric or anti-symmetric. So, with the sigma plane, we have mapped whether they are symmetric or anti-symmetric. And then the third thing is you have to correlate the molecular orbitals of the reactant with the product. Now, let us do that. So, this is exactly correlating with this one, right. And now, the second molecular orbital is anti-symmetric. But here in the product, it is symmetric. So, you cannot correlate a different symmetry between the molecular orbitals of reactant and the product. You have to match or correlate with the same symmetry, right. So, for that, what we need to do, we need to match with this one. Okay. So, it is anti-symmetric and this is also anti-symmetric. For this one, what is happening? Again, you need to match with this one. Okay. And finally, this is matching this way. So, what is happening here? After observing this, what do you conclude? Means, under this rotatory process, the conversion of the butadiene to cyclobutene is happening in the excited state. Why I am saying this is as an excited state? Because in the correlation diagram, you can see the matching with crossing over of the energy barrier. So, this energy barrier is crossed here. So, that means crossover is seen here, which indicates that the reaction happens in the excited state. So, if it is happening in the excited state, that means the reaction condition is photochemical. So, the disrotatory process of conversion of butadiene to cyclobutene or the reverse is seen in the case of photochemical conditions for a 4n electron system, for a 4n electron system. So, this is also exactly giving the same result similar to that of the frontier molecular orbital which we have seen. Okay, hope you have understood. So, coming to the next one, we will also see for 4n plus 2 pi electron system that is the conversion of 1 comma 3 comma 5 hexa triene to cyclohexadiene, cyclohexadiene. So, now we are going to discuss the conversion of hexatriene to cyclohexadiene. So, this is the reaction. So, as already established for a con-rotatory process, C2 axis of symmetry element and for this rotatory process, sigma plane is to be observed. Now, second thing is we need to draw the molecular orbitals, pi molecular orbitals for both the reactant as well as the product. So, for product, you will be drawing both sigma as well as the pi molecular orbitals. For the reactant, you will be concentrating on the pi molecular orbitals alone. So, how many pi molecular orbitals will be seen for hexatriene? 6 pi molecular orbitals. The number of pi molecular orbitals is equal to the number of sp2 carbon atoms.
So, these are the 5, 6 pi molecular orbitals for the hexatriene and then what you need to do is you need to show So now these are the 6 pi molecular orbitals of hexatriene, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, psi 5 and psi 6. So when you see this psi 1 molecular orbital is having 0 nodes, psi 2 is having 1 node here, psi 3 is having 2 nodes, so one here and the other here, so psi 4 is having 3 nodes one here, second one and third one. So, psi 5 is having four nodes, one here, two here, three and four. So, psi 6 is having five nodes like this. Okay. So, now what would you like to perform? Either con rotations or dis rotations. So, if you want to see the con rotations, so then C2 axis has to be checked. If you want to see the dis rotations, then sigma plane has to be checked. So, before that, I will draw also this molecular orbitals for the product. So, this is the sigma molecular orbital. So, this is pi 1 molecular orbital. So, this is pi 2 molecular orbital, this is pi star, pi 3 star molecular orbital, so 
pi 4 star antibond in pi molecular orbital and then finally the sigma star antibonding molecular orbital how do they look like so this is sigma bonding so it will look like this so this is pi bonding it will look like this this is another pi bonding molecular orbital and pi anti bonding molecular orbital and now this is also anti bonding pi molecular orbital and this is sigma star anti bonding molecular orbital. So, which one would you like to see now? Okay, we will go with the con rotations. So, con rotation means the symmetry element you need to identify in molecular orbitals is C2 axis of symmetry. So, now check the C2 axis of symmetry on con mode of interactions. So, first we are checking the con mode C2 axis. So, this is the psi1 molecular orbital. Is it going to have the C2 axis of symmetry? No, this is having sigma plane of symmetry. So, C2 axis of symmetry is absent here. And now coming to the psi2 molecular orbital. So, of course, on rotation by 180 degrees, you can get the C2 axis. So, symmetric with respect to C2 axis. So, this is again anti-symmetric, symmetric, anti-symmetric and symmetric. Right. So, in brief, or in shortcut what you can say is so for odd number of molecular orbitals you cannot see the c2 axis of symmetry see psi1 is anti-symmetric psi3 is anti-symmetric psi5 is also anti-symmetric even number molecular orbital will have c2 axis of symmetry coming to the product side so you have c2 axis of symmetry because upon rotation by 180 degrees you have this and then here you check it, it is having mirror plane, not the C2 axis. So it is anti-symmetric with respect to C2 axis of symmetry and this is symmetric with respect to C2 axis and then again it is anti-symmetric with respect to C2 axis and then here it is symmetric with respect to and this is anti-symmetric. So where is the energy barrier? So the energy barrier is here. Now try to map these things. What is going to happen? Whether it is going to cross the energy barrier, uh, that means the reaction is going to happen in the excited state or in the ground state. So what is seen here? So this is matching with this, this is matching with this. And now this is anti-symmetric and this is matching with this and this symmetric which is matching with this. And again this is matching with this and then this with this. What is seen here is crossover has observed, has been observed. So you are able to see the crossover. So which indicates that it happens in the excited state. It happens in the excited state. So, if you go back to the Woodward Hoffman rule for foreign electron system under thermal conditions, under photochemical conditions, con mode is allowed under thermal conditions. So, this mode is allowed under photochemical conditions. For foreign plus 2 systems, pi electron systems, this mode is allowed under thermal conditions and con mode is allowed under photochemical conditions. Exactly this is what you are also able to see here. Am I right? 
So, this is the con process, con rotatory process where C2 axis of element uh, symmetry element is to be observed and with that you can see that there is a crossover, there is a crossover which finally indicates that the reaction is happening in the excited state. If it is, if it has to happen in the excited state, then the reaction condition must be photochemical condition. So, which is already proved with the help of frontier molecular orbital theory in the previous class itself, right. So, coming to the disrotatory process, coming to the disrotatory process, if it is disrotatory, then you need to see the sigma plane of symmetry element, right. So, with respect to sigma plane of symmetry element, how this reaction is going to be seen. So, sigma plane of symmetry is seen in the psi 1, it is not seen in the psi 2, psi 3 is seen, so psi 4 it is absent and psi 5 it is seen and psi 6 it is absent. The same sigma plane of symmetry is seen in the case of sigma also seen in the case of pi 1 and it is absent in the case of this one pi 2. So, when you come for this uh, pi 3 sigma plane is present and psi 4 you cannot see right c2 it is having c2 not sigma plane. So, and here also it is absent. So, now try to match this. So, it is exactly coinciding or correlating with this sigma molecular orbital and then it is correlating with this and this is correlating with this. So, see here this is correlating with this and this is correlating with this and this is also correlating with this one. So, two after uh, seeing this correlation diagram for the conversion of hexatriene to cyclohexadiene in disrotatory mode where the sigma plane of symmetry element has to be considered. So, what you can see is there is no crossover. So, there is no crossover is seen. If there is no crossover that means the reaction is happening in the ground state. So, if it is in ground state that means the reaction condition is like thermal condition. So, you see for a 4n plus 2 electron system disrotatory mode is allowed in the thermal conditions only. So, hence we have completely proved that whatever the analysis done by the frontier molecular orbital is exactly going to be similar with the orbital symmetry correlation method. And based on these two methods what we have concluded is the Woodward Hoffman rules under thermal conditions for a 4n electron system con mode is allowed under photochemical conditions for a 4n electron system dis mode is allowed. Whereas, for a 4n plus 2 pi electron system under thermal conditions dis is allowed under photochemical conditions con is allowed ok. So, this is all about the orbital correlation method ok. So, hope you have understood and we will see the uh, examples of electrocyclic reactions in the next class. Thank you.